to review a, a stock in uh, listed at BSc and NSc uh, which is into educational services business name of the business is MT educate so welcome to the channel MT Educare it's a successful story which started off uh, as a small tutorial which went on to uh, expand tutorials and later become a listed and later become a listed entity before it was getting uh, funding from private equity and uh, uh, it, it was started off uh, in 1988 by a person uh, called Mahesh Shetty, uh, who was a dedicated teacher and uh, in 2018 it was acquired by a, a company called Sealearn which is mainly into uh, school business so let me give you more idea about um, Mahesh tutorials and uh, empty educator as well so when we see what is the main business of uh, empty educator they they have the flagship brand which is mahesh tutorial which is a uh, day-to-day tutorial focusing on uh, school school science and commerce education it starts from uh, ninth standard to 12th standard it starts from actually fifth standard and uh, they have they have other uh, CPLC classes which mainly focuses on uh, entrance preparation for MBA and uh, it gives uh, entrance preparation for CAT, uh, GRE and others. 2012 they acquired a company called Lexia which gave them uh, an opportunity to be in uh, medical and engineering uh, entrance coaching they also have an educational edutech platform which is called robomate which is more than uh, at least 300000 uh, registrations uh, in order to be uh, asset light uh, uh, coaching or entrance preparation uh, i mean uh, in order to be asset light uh, business uh, in order to improve a satellite business model, they have tied up uh, with many uh, many schools and colleges in order to provide the engineering and medical test preparation through leased campuses. They call it as uh, Mahesh PU College. Like they would be uh, renting or leasing a campus uh, which is rent for schools and they will be giving preparations over there. So Mahesh tutorial they actually started a PU college initially in Mangalore. They they later sold it and leased it back. They uh, in the same method they have uh, a tie up with the uh, Sri Gayatri Education Society. They also give the same kind of science oriented entrance preparation uh, coaching services uh, through those campuses. If you see what is the main business structure, they give uh, uh, normal school tuitions from standard 5th to standard uh, 12th standard and uh, they have all kind of entrance preparation uh, coaching services uh, whether it is in, uh, engineering, medical, even CA related to commerce and MBA everything everything they have in their kitty uh, if you see uh, the history of Mahesh tutorials or MT educator in 19, 9, 1988 they started as a first branch of Mahesh tutorials which is set up by Mahesh Shetty later they expanded by introducing more and more branches uh, 2007 they got a uh, heavy boost in uh, business because a PE investment company they 
invested around uh, 8 million into the uh, into mt educare for expansion in mumbai after getting uh, support from p uh, investment they they opened centers in uh, karnataka gujarat tamil nadu uh, they went on to list on the stock market 2011 and 2012 they made two acquisition one is chichale personalized learning private limited and uh, Lexia Forum for Competitions Private Limited. 2016, they they launched their own EduTech platform, which is a Robomate app. 2018, they were acquired by SL Group uh, by an infusion of 200 crores into the group. Acquisition, I mean, uh, they actually spent more than 200 crores, but uh, the infusion is around uh, 200 crores. Now, if you see what is the business model, how they operate, uh, they are into uh, entrance preparation uh, business segment and uh, normal tutorial uh, businesses. So, they started uh, business operation in 2007 in a large scale after getting uh, funding from the PE investment. Now they run uh, more than uh, 188 coaching centers in uh, 110 locations. Company operates 18 coaching centers. I mean, they uh, they don't own it. They operate 18 coaching centers. That is mainly in Maharashtra. CPLC have three branches in Mumbai and they have uh, uh, many, uh, understand, I mean, tie-ups with the uh, uh, centers in Gorgon and Delhi in order to provide uh, other uh, coaching related to MBA preparation. 2014, uh, they got uh, they signed an agreement with Chaitanya Pub Publication Private Limited, which give them a huge boost because they they are getting uh, publishing and distribution right. Uh, distribution right of um, distribution of education content from Chandana publications so in tutorial business they are getting a huge uh, 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 educational content kitty which give them uh, uh, give them a good expertise uh, Lexia acquisition gave uh, the company a huge boost because they uh, Previously, they had in ha, had in have uh, much expertise with uh, engineering and medical entrance coaching examination. So, Lexia acquisition actually gave them that expertise and the course content uh, in order to uh, in order for uh, expansion or uh, uh, running uh, implementing in the same centers run by them. They had a uh, business model which is pre-university model like uh, it's an uh, asset like business model like they will be leasing campuses uh, uh, which is run by other educational institutions uh, they would be giving entrance preparation on the campuses uh, which is uh, for plus one and plus two they would be giving uh, entrance coaching exam uh, examination preparation so they initially implemented in Mysore uh, by building the pre-university college itself. They sold it and they leased it back. They have similar types with the Gayatri Educational Society in Telangana. Uh, Robomat app actually had done more than 300,000 uh, 300, downloads. They have main presence in uh, Maharashtra and uh, the uh, Maharashtra and Canada, uh, Karnataka uh, so they are mainly into seven eight states in India they have a huge room for improvement so Sealand acquired MT Educare in 2018 they spent around 280 crores for acquisition and now they hold 59.12 percentage of shares C-Learn mainly runs preschools and schools uh, around India. I mean, they are they are 
പാൻ ഇന്ത്യൻ ബോണ്ട് സോ വെൻ വി കൺസിഡർ ഹൗ എം ടി എജ്യൂക്കർ ആൻഡ് സി ലേൺ കെൻ വർക്ക് ടുഗദർ ആൻഡ് ക്രിയേറ്റ് എ സിനോജി വി ക്യാൻ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് മൈ എം ടി എജ്യൂക്കർ ഈസ് ലിമിറ്റഡ് ഓൺലി ടു സെവൻ ടു എയ്റ്റ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ്സ് ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ എക്സ്പെൻഡ് പാൻ ഇന്ത്യ മഹേഷ് ടുട്ടോറിയൽ ഹാസ് എ ഹ്യൂജ് പോർട്ട്ഫോളിയോ ഓഫ് എജ്യൂക്കേഷൻ കണ്ടെന്റ് വിച്ച് ക്യാൻ ബി യൂസ് ഫുൾ ഫോർ ദ സി ലേൺ സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് ആൻഡ് ദേ ആർ ആൾസോ ദേ ദ സി ലേൺ സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് ക്യാൻ ആൾസോ ബി കസ്റ്റമേഴ്സ് ഫോർ മഹേഷ് ടുട്ടോറിയൽസ് കോച്ചിങ് സർവീസസ് ആസ് വെൽ സോ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ വിൻ വിൻ ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ഫോർ ബോത്ത് ഓഫ് ദ and another thing is silen is a very successful company because of their asset light business model so they uh, they make their business asset light by franchising so they can uh, mt educator can learn from silen in order to make their business asset light and uh, get more profitable silen actually uh, uh try to reduce the debts in mt educator so that uh, they can save the interest cost of the debt uh when silen actually acquired mt educator uh from that date i mean 2018 the market capitalization of both mt educator and uh, silen actually came down i mean depreciated heavily but uh, i feel that if a successful integration plays out it would every uh, it would it would improve everything from cash flow to market capitalization we would uh, we would look at how the share holding pattern is so in uh, june 2018 the promoters ha- has around 83. 22 percentage in mt educator the promoters have decreased their share holding to 63.28 in de- december 2020 which is not a good sign if promoters decreasing their share holding in a company which means that they uh, i mean there could be some issues and uh, if you see fias and uh, dias that is uh, foreign institutional investors and uh, domestic institutional investors they previously held shares in uh, mt educator but right now for so many years they don't have any share holding in mt educator which is not a good sign and public holding uh, actually it has seen increase from 16.52 to 36.72 you can you can also say that it is also a good sign because uh, uh, public became main uh, shareholder of a company means uh, public can run it right so let's also review uh, who are the main promoters of uh, mt educator mahesh shetty uh, who was the founder of mt educator he possessed around 23.59 percent share in uh in uh, 2018 uh recently it has came down to 18.35 that means that he has decreased around uh, 5 near to 5.5 percentage of share which is not a good sign and another bad sign is also the the whole percentage of uh, his uh, around 15.23 percentage of his shares is also pledged another thing is seelearn uh, when acquiring the company in 2018 2019 uh, they haven't pledged any shares of uh, mt educator right now they have uh, the 30% of shares is pledged uh i have done an analysis of uh, business analysis of mt educator so later i would be discussing much about financial uh, status of mt educator 
I would be using these uh, financial indicators and uh, uh, ratios in order to uh, give you an idea about how the f how the finance work in MT Educare, how profitable they are, how what is their debt position, and as an investor whether you should invest into the sh uh, share or not through valuations. So I would be mainly using three kinds of ratios. One is return ratios, which is uh, basically I mean gives you an idea how profitable companies how much income they are earning and so on and insolvency ratios i would be mainly discussing uh, what is their debt position how how much risky is the company based upon their debt position and in valuation ratios i would be mainly discussing how uh, how the company is attractive to the, an investor like you whether you can buy by the share or uh, how much it is attractive. If you see the market capitalization of MT Educare is 63.6 crores, uh, which is very less as uh, previously I said that after 2018 accusation, the market capitalization of MT Educare has come down. So market ca capitalization is nothing but uh, market price of one share into total number of shares in the market so currently the market price is 8.80 but uh, you know uh, market capitalization comes down when the price of a share decreases so it's obvious that when uh, company is not performing well market capitalization also decreases but if you see the book value, book value is nothing but, let's see, book value is nothing but firm's net asset value. Uh, that means that uh, whenever somebody say uh, sells all the assets of company, how much money uh, it will be attributed to each share. You are getting around 23.7 rupees uh, for when you sell all the assets of MTH girl which is very really high compared with the current price. So it's, I mean, it's uh, attractive. Uh, the company has, hasn't given any dividend for so many years. Uh, ROC, return on capital uh, employed and return on uh, uh, equity, I would be discussing later. Face value is 10 which means that there is always a opportunity to split the shares and uh, it, it will be more useful when the uh, the price of the shares goes so high and uh, it's so expensive for the retail investor to buy it you can split the shares and you can get the pr uh, price of the share down So I would be uh, focusing on return ratios, which is uh, uh, which which will give you an idea how much company makes, uh, how much income they are making, how much profit they are making, uh, how the company is functioning financially. <coughs> company, uh, if you if you see what is a total revenue. Uh, total revenue of MT Educare for years in 2000 uh, quarter I mean uh, not the yearly revenues it's calculated it's shown from June 2018 to December 2020 and uh, uh, the, the revenues has been decreasing uh, from June 2018 and it was stabilizing uh, it was getting nearly same revenues after that but uh, from march 2020 uh, the revenues has been down which is mainly which you can normally understand the whole industry was suffering because of corona pandemic and lockdown effects so it's very understandable that revenues were down 
but it is not uh, i mean uh, revenue is decent Uh, based upon revenues when we calculate uh, what is the net profit for the recent quarters uh, the the company has been uh, making around uh, 2.35 crores in december 2018 and has been uh, making um, better profits in later quarters but in march 2020 the the results has been bad i mean the net profit has been minus 59.03 uh, around 60 crores loss happened in march 2020 you can easily as i said previously the corona pandemic effect has been uh, seriously affecting the company but later on in june september and december company has been performing i mean slowly in, uh, the bottom line has been improving <coughs> i am also reviewing profit and loss statement in, uh, the good thing about uh, reviewing profit and loss statement is that uh, for years you would understand what is the sales what is the expenses what is operating ma- margin operating margin is very important because uh, it gives you idea like uh, how much company uh, how much percentage of uh, profit they makes out of income so uh, f- from march 2011 to march 2016 the profit uh, the operating margin has been steady and they have at least getting around 18 percentage annually which means that uh, for 1 rupee they spend they are getting 18 paisa or 19 paisa uh, in profit which is uh, which which is very high i mean which is high so in 2017 it has decreased to 10 percentage and 2018 it decreased to minus 77 percentage both uh, and uh, you can also see the expenses have jumped in 2017 the expenses have jumped to 274 crores and in 2018 2018 is obvious because uh, they had been occurred by uh, sealand and there were a lot of administrative expenses but 2017 something happened to the the company and uh, the expenses has been very high and that even uh, that even shown on the you know, the net profit operating margin everything and uh, and in march 2020 financial year uh, they had been a decent uh, operating margin The, it is coming to 16 showing the pattern that uh, the company is improving but uh, if you see the trailing uh, 12 months um, percentage it is minus 18 which means that due to corona pandemic the company hasn't been performing uh, to the to the normal uh, circumstances so the return ratio is continue uh there is if you see the return on equity return on equity is nothing but total income by number of shares it it gives you an idea like uh, how much income coming to every shares so in last 5 years it was making minus 12 percentage which means that uh, company is getting less uh, shareholders are getting less income and the, the sales has been bad uh, compounded sales growth for the 5 uh, years has been mad like only uh, the sales growth was minus 2 percentage which is uh, compared with the industry standards is high it's go- getting uh, negative sales growth means the company was not performing uh, to its uh, 
to the strength where it can perform and compound compounded profit growth also uh, for the tra- uh, to- total trailing months also very bad now i would discuss uh, return on equity on an annual basis and uh, net profit margin on an annual basis return on equity i previously i have said it's uh, mainly total income divided by number of shares which means that how much income uh, coming for each share so in this one uh, they are uh, the uh, the return on income was was steady and uh, growing until 2016 like i said previously from from 2017 it's it was decreasing uh 2019 uh, the business stabilized to some extent but uh, uh in 2020 as you know corona pandemic actually uh, gave damage to the return on equity as well net profits it was uh, net profit margin at least they were getting around 9 percentage 11 percentage 12 percentage and so on from march 2011 to 16 but later on uh, like uh, return on equity the uh, the net profit margin also has uh, affected same thing uh, 2019 net profit has been little more stable and to 20 decrease due to the same reason as i said earlier return on capital employed uh, why why we uh, actually use return on capital employed is uh, in return on equity we don't actually consider the debt uh, it is mainly total income divided by shares but in uh, return on capital employed we actually considered the total assets uh, minus current liabilities so we actually considers Uh, debt position of the company which is uh, better indicator than return on equity uh, especially uh, companies with uh, uh, huge debt so if you see return on capital employed uh, except for march 2018 uh, return on capital employed was uh, not bad for the company the company was performing in a good manner uh, it it made around 33.2 in 2015 and uh, 2016 which is not bad mm, which which is good actually uh, and in 2019 and 2020 even though uh it it has affected uh, with corona pandemic and so on still the company managed to perform uh 6 percentage of roc roc is an indicator like how much uh, higher you get it's uh, it's good that much now i am moving on to solvency ratios solvency ratios uh, like i said previously it gives you an idea how much indebted companies and uh, what is their risk position related to their debt i'm considering debt to equity ratio debt to equity ratio is nothing but uh, um, total liabilities divided by total shareholders equity so it gives you an idea like uh for one percentage of uh, liability how much uh, percentage of uh, shareholders equity is there so anything below one is good because it gives you an idea that uh, for one percentage of debt you have one percentage of equity so uh in march 2017 it it in in the debt to equity ratio increased to 1.02 percentage which is very high 
so it it actually increased from uh, march 2016 it was only having uh, 0.24 uh, depth ratio which is favorable but suddenly it increased to 1.02 percentage so previously also we have discussed that in 2017 the the total uh, operating margin net profit everything has been affected in 2017 so i doubt doubt that uh, in 2017 something happened to uh, related to the debt position of the company which actually uh, gave a lot of uh, issues to th to the company and from 2018 after acquisition it has uh, currently stabilized if you see that march 2020 also it has a debt position uh, debt equity ratio of 0 0.36 which is also ideal interest coverage ratio interest coverage ratio uh, it is very important like uh, interest coverage ratio uh, is a bit divided by interest expense this ratio actually uh, gives you an idea that uh, whether the firm is able to service their debt or not so uh, like uh, the lenders uh, lenders when give you loan and so on they would always see what is the interest coverage ratio of a certain company so uh, based upon their income after before uh, interest and taxes they would uh, see how ma uh, how much percentage of in, uh, interest expense would be coming uh, from the ebit so in this actually interest coverage ratio if it is going down especially especially below one it's very dangerous but uh, in this companies i mean uh, when you see the interest coverage ratio in march 2011 and so on company did not have any debt so the interest coverage ratio is around 5000 so uh, in it gradually decreased uh, from march 2015 uh, from 1.75 going in negative in march 2018 which is uh, minus 7.78 which, which is very bad but uh, later the company has uh, slightly i mean managed to pay off debt and later uh, right now it stands at uh, 0.68 which is also less than one which is which is not ideal so the company uh, the the main weakness about the uh, empty educator is uh, they have a bad interest coverage ratio so anybody investing into this company uh, the the main risk they have to keep it in mind that if somehow they cannot pay their uh, pay their interest on time they will be they have to be uh, the company has to go for additional funding uh, fundraise or uh, uh, even bankruptcy so uh, altogether when uh, when i am discussing about the deposition of mtg they had a debt of 176 crores uh, when the sealearn acquired them and sealearn actually uh, cleared a debt of 51 crores so sealearn also infused 200 crores into empty educator right now they have a, a debt near to 80 crores and they had a credit rating of bb positive stable rating from uh, chrysal and a4 rating for short term uh, which is uh, which is not uh, which is good uh, i mean it's not that good but still considerably not bad right now i am concentrating on value valuation ratios 
valuation ratio is nothing but uh, it gives the the viewers an idea whether uh, you should uh, whether you should invest into the company or not it gives you uh, how the company is valued right now the book value book value previously also when i was uh, giving an idea about the financial evaluation and initial slides i uh, explained you that the book value is very higher compared with the current market price of the share so in 2016 and so on it has a book value of 37.31 later it came down but still the book value is so high compared with the uh, the share value uh, which gives you an idea that uh, the uh, the share is highly undervalued so you can buy it Uh, but you had to consider other uh, other factors like uh, whether they would be able to uh, manage their debt uh, other risk factors related to industry risk uh, which is uh, currently the corona pandemic lockdown effects and so on price to book value uh, let me discuss what is price to book value price to book value is the market price of a share uh divided by book value per share so price to book value gives you an idea that uh, whether uh, whether a share is undervalued or uh, overvalued so if the price to book value is 1 which means that uh, the market price is accurately valued uh, to the book value of the share like if you sell all the assets of the company and if you get 1 rupee uh, the market price of the share should be also 1 rupee then uh, the price to book value is 1 so anything above 1 uh, is actually overvalued but many companies have a, a higher price to book value because of the um, premium they get in the market so in march 2016 and so on they have a price to book value of 4.43 which is really higher uh, from 1 rupee um, 1 uh, i mean book value of 1 so later the book value as uh, price to book value as uh, decrease it was uh, it was stable for 2017 18 and 2019 around 2.46 average so but in march 2020 it ha- it came down to 0.28 which gives you an idea that the stock is highly undervalued so there is a, always an opportunity to invest in two undervalued stock considering all the risk factors associated with the share p p ratio if you take uh it is minus 1.34 which means that uh the earning per share uh earning per share is very down so i believe it should be mainly because of uh, um, uh the valuation i mean the the bear factor associated with the the share because um, because the price of the share also determines how, how much uh, pr- uh, price to earning it should it should comment if you see the industrial uh, industrial p is 92.76 and the p ratio of mt educare is minus 1.34 when you compare with the industry pe and uh, pe ratio of mt educare there is a huge difference i mean it's highly undervalued now uh, last last analysis i mean uh, i am giving you three analysis uh, which which is sort analysis which is uh, strength weakness opportunity and threat analysis 
and i would be analyzing uh, i will be also doing peer analysis which is comparing with the peer companies and uh, whether you should come uh, invest into mth care or other companies and i would be also um, also looking at the price pattern in a long term and giving uh, at last i would be also giving my insights about the share now what is the strength of mt educare mt educare i mean uh, if you see the there is a strong cash generating from core business for the last two years so slowly the the business has been improving cash flow has been improving and uh, uh, as i said as i uh, shown in the previous slides the net profit has been increasing for the last three quarters so even though it is minute i mean uh, the profits has been increasing and currently company has a low debt even though uh company had huge debt uh, st company still have debt company has reduced their debt considerably and uh, as a negative indicator they have a uh, no the, as a strength itself they have a, a decreasing promoter pledge like the pro the promoter pledge has been coming down now if you see what are the main weakness that is affecting mt educare previously also i have uh, said to you said to the viewers that uh, um, the company has a low interest coverage ratio which is which is highly risky if you cannot uh, service your debt the promoter holding has been decreasing and uh, there are a lot of pledge shares by the promoters both of them are highly negative and uh, sales growth for 5 years and sales growth of uh, return on equity for 5 years has been down i mean 2 2 percentage uh, minus 2 percentage of sales growth for last 5 years i mean when comparing with the industry industry growth it's highly negative and they have condition see condition liabilities of 28.58 crores which is not so high compared uh, with the listed companies but still they have debt to clear they, they you should understand their market capitalization is only 68 crores but uh, like i said previously uh, market capitalization is something figure uh which depends on market uh, how the market performs i mean the if the market price of the share is down market capitalization is also down now it's all about opportunity and threats like there is a high delivery percentage with the share i mean a lot of people uh, actually wait for turn around so that they can they can make a profits in long term um, i have given you a lot of uh, good thing about the companies in previous slides etc uh, the companies with low p low price to book value and so on so ideally you can buy it but the red flag is uh, there is uh, those a uh, resignation from top management they were uh, Uh, negative sales growth for the last five years, and there was a trend in non-core income. Uh, these things I have uh, discussed previously also, but this comes as a threats. Now let me compare with uh, five other companies in, in the same industry. similar like uh, mt educare one is uh, one is nothing but sealand which is uh, uh, which is the main uh, promoter of mt educare itself so in market capitalization uh, mt educare is in sixth place 
when c learn is the market leader and career point is the uh, runner up but if you compare uh, same thing uh, with the uh, petrosky score comparison like petrosky score is nothing but it gives you an idea how the company is uh, performed financially it's a score uh, that's ranging from 0 to 9 so in that in that score current point is the best company to choose it they have the first rank and c learn comes as the second rank and uh, shanti education initiative third and if you compare price to book uh, book value uh, mt educator in the seventh position uh, it is above cl educate limited CL, uh, which means that CL educated is uh, highly undervalued than empty educator. It is more undervalued than empty educator. So you can compare with uh, uh, based on what these figures, you can compare with other peers in the same group and make your decision whether you should in, uh, invest into empty educator. Let's also discuss about the price pattern of the share. Uh, the MT Educator share has uh, rise to 191.50 rupees in May uh, 2016, which was the highest for the share. And from there, it has been uh, all the way decreasing down. And uh, in uh, if is uh, in 2000 after 2016 i said 2017 the debt position of the company has been going down in 2018 the uh, the company has been acquired by uh, sealer this also um, impacted the company like uh, both the market capitalization of uh, sealer and mt care affected and the price uh, the current market price of the company was coming down in 2019 may may 2019 it actually rise to 91.65 from the lows so uh, when you think why it has improved from uh, 2000 i mean 10th may 2019 to 91 Point sixty five rupees. You can see that uh, two thousand in previous slides also. To in two thousand nineteen, the performance has been better. So that might be reason why it has improved. And from two thousand twenty uh, initially, the price of the share has been decreasing like anything. And it is uh, right now it is trading at eight rupee fifty uh, paise which is which is which is a peanut paise but uh, when i am uh, in my opinion this is highly undervalued last let me give you my own insights about uh, this share uh, this is my insight i would always uh, recommend my viewers that you make your own decisions and uh, about your own investments so my if my insights help you to make an uh, can investment always i always welcome that the current market price of the share is 8.57 which is way below book value of 23.7 which means that if you sell the assets you get 23.7 rupees so highly undervalued p ratio uh, price to book value every, in every indicator the stock is undervalued and previously also I have uh, discussed if they can successfully integrate with the uh, sealer and if the synergy plays out it will be a huge success story because uh, sealer is the market leader in school business MT Educator is the uh, is a good uh, player in uh, coaching i mean entrance coaching section 
so they can uh, uh, it's a win win opportunity for both of them and if they can successfully integrate their services mutually that would make wonders uh the negative uh, in the negativity is uh, the whole industry is uh, in, at a short term risk due to no lockdown effects and corona pandemic issues so considering that all the educational stocks would be down so it's your uh, decision whether you should invest into educational stocks or not and uh, the other major risk is new new tech educational companies like byju's an academy they have a huge funding from uh, pe firms and uh, venture capitalists so they are flushed with money so if you if mt educator has to compete with these companies uh, they should match their services the main negative factors associated uh, with uh, this stocker promoters are selling stake they are pledging uh, their shares and there is a huge uh, uh, interest cost uh, i mean interest coverage ratio is high so but still i think that uh, they can turn things around like if the corona pandemic uh, the issues related to corona pandemic dies down uh, their uh, business will improve and uh, there would be uh, there would be a lot of uh, improvement in the business uh, the viewers can uh, read my disclaimer and not a licensed portfolio manager i would uh, always recommend my viewers to make your own decisions and uh, make your own uh, investments i would al always uh, welcome your comments your views about uh, my video uh, also give me any information that i missed